Well, today is Wednesday, April 17th, and the Cardinals are finishing up their three-game set against the Oakland Athletics. And today on the Dealing Dark Cards podcast, we wanted to go through early season player grades, who's performing well, who's struggling. We'll cover all of that and more on this episode of Dealing the Cards. All right, Sandy, the game's not over yet, so no. we'll do that in real time. Yeah. Uh, we'll about the Cardinals after this three-game series against Oakland. Well, the positives are that the Cardinals have already won the series. So even if they go out with a loss today, which it's trending that direction, they're down three in the ninth now. Even if they end up losing this game, they did win the series. And we've said on here a number of times, you can't really be upset about a series win no matter who it's against. It's on the road, um, but I would say Oakland hardly counts as a road environment. It's basically an exhibition stadium at this point. There's nobody there. And um, there are definitely things to be frustrated about after this series. The Cardinals are playing probably the worst team in the league. Uh, if there's ever a time, White Sox. Okay, yeah, the White Sox are worse. But if there's ever a time to expect a sweep, uh, it's coming against Oakland or Chicago or one of those you know bummy teams. And um, I'll, I'll be honest, any loss against a team like that is something that makes me upset. So I'm a little bummed out that they're not getting the win today. Um, I you know also the offense this series has just looked awful. We're yeah. facing some of the worst, probably one of the worst pitching staffs in the league. It's right up there with Colorado, Miami, and uh, the Cardinals haven't done much. There's no damage that they've done. They've really struggled to convert when they've had opportunities. Um, I can name three doubles that they, three leadoff doubles that they've wasted this series, not been able to score a single run. Uh, Contreras had a crucial base running error today. It's just sloppy baseball, uh, and that's why they've scored nine runs in three games against Oakland. So, kind of the story of the season, an offense that's really underwhelmed so far not thrilled. Yeah. And Cody just put in the chat, Oakland was, I mean, they're, they're going to have a seven or they're going to have eight and 11 record after this series. So like, even if the team as a whole is poor, I feel like <clears throat> Oakland this year so far has not looked like Oakland the last few years. True. So I'm not like as concerned. And like you said, I'm not going to get mad. It's, it's hard, especially when you lose the last game of a series, you could have swept. It's hard not to get frustrated and, and kind of on a sour note. I'm not going to get mad about a series win. I feel good about it. I mean, that's they need to, they, I mean, you stack up. If you win every series, you're going to be a really good team. Obviously, the Cardinals haven't done that so far and won't do that. But you get a series win, it's always a positive. For me, the the real frustration of this series is just how the offense has looked. I'm not even, I don't even care they gave up six runs today. That's going to happen. But the fact that they, if, if the score holds six three today, they've scored three runs in every game this series. They've scored three runs or less in like, I think 80% of the games they've played this year. It's just not good, especially for any team. You can't be just scoring three runs or less every game, but for a team like the Cardinals that built itself upon having a strong offense, the offense hasn't been strong so far. And so we'll probably get into it as we go through the player grades. We uh, People have a variety of opinions about what this means about the Cardinals offense for the whole year. I'm not concerned about the offense yet. Um, I'm concerned about how it's playing right now, but I'm not like big picture concerned yet. Um, but I mean, when you're playing against a team like Oakland or uh, last or against the Phillies, they really should have probably pulled out another game than they did. There's just been a bunch of games this year where it's like you, the defense played well, the pitching was good, the bullpen held it down, and the offense just couldn't do it. And obviously, they gave up six runs today, but it's just frustrating to not <clears throat> have this offense be what it what we thought it could be going into this year. So I might at the very least need to re or re alter my expectations for the ceiling of this offense. Um, but I still, I still believe it can be a top unit. So what we wanted to do today is we wanted to go through and give some player grades. And it's very early in the season so far. So there's no reason to, um, these are not our like final grades by any means. And there's plenty of time for things to change. But um, we've got a bunch of different categories, the A through F like usual. And then we have a little S tier as well for anyone that we think has been like perfect so far. Like this is, yeah, this is I think there's really only one player, in my opinion, that could really fit into S tier right now. We'll kind of get to that. But otherwise, we'll kind of give grades based on what we think overall player performance they've done so far. So this isn't you. We could have done it based off expectations, which would have been interesting as well. Um, but I think we, we, yeah. we kind of wanted to land with this today is overall. How is this player playing this year? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Sandy, anything else you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you've basically said it all right. This is just a, a check-in on how everybody's doing, I guess. So, yeah. you know, good way to look at it. 
and we'll come back to this throughout the year. So obviously <clears throat> there's some different players on here that haven't played yet, like Tommy Evan, Dylan Carlson. So we're not going to count them or grade them today. Um, and there's a couple on here that have only played a few games, but we're still going to grade them. And then throughout the year, we can kind of see where we had them graded before and how are we changing our grades as we go on. So let's start off with honestly a really polarizing player. I don't think anyone's, no one's defending how Victor Scott's playing the play right now, but obviously it's, it's it's been rough and so there's many opinions about how big or good of an impact he's had on the club so far regardless of the offensive output sandy where if you had to put like his overall performance right now what would you put for a letter grade (sighs) this is really tough um obviously i'm letting my expectations factor in a little bit it's hard to just erase that i I would probably give victor scott a d to this point in the season Um, when he's on base, he's fun to watch and the speed is real. He made a great play last night that took away maybe extra bases. Um, I I remember a similar play last year where Jordan Walker dove for a ball like that. It got past him and it ended up being an inside the park home run. So, you know, he's, he's had value in the field, his arms, good, all of that. But I'm going to say D just because at the plate, it's been abysmal. There's really no way around it. Um, I I just don't think he's ready. So that's where I'm going to put him. I assume you've got a similar idea. Yeah, it's weird. I'm going to go D2 because obviously his defense and his base running has been a lot better than that. But if Tommy Edmond or Dylan Carlson are healthy right now, I don't think it's a question that Victor Scott would be in AAA. And if you're being sent down because there's a part of your game that's so flawed right now um, that it kind of doesn't matter how good you are defensively and and on the base pass, I think that's worthy of a D. Um, I I could be talked into a C as like well he's done everything else well it's just he's got one really bad tool so far but i don't think i don't think he's happy with the performance and again this isn't we don't think of him as a d player we think he's awesome Absolutely. we're really excited mm-hmm. about him on turn but the performance so far just hasn't been it uh, maybe he turns it around soon but I, my my guess would be if it doesn't turn around soon either they send him down and see he's in center field but with the it just continues to seem like they don't want to move new bar to center field and i don't totally get it i think I know the defense is not elite there, but I think he's good enough for a patch if we need him to be mm-hmm. there. Um, <clears throat> but it kind of sounds like Victor Scott's going to get the runway here, and if he turns around before Edmund and Carlson get back, maybe things change. If not, though, he's probably going to be taking the trip to Memphis, and that's probably what's best for him in his long-term development. So, um, But someone who is more established, and I would say he's played a lot better than a D, I don't know where you put him on the scale, is Ryan Helsley. I think I'd put him in an A. Um, I know he had that one... He had yeah. one blown save, right? Um, but he does lead the National League in saves, I believe, or maybe even all of baseball. All of baseball. Array, yep. 12 strikes in 10 innings, seven saves. And honestly, a lot of his saves, he's come in and closed the door really quickly. Like it hasn't, there's been a yeah. few times he's given up a hit and whatever, but that happens. You're really for it's going to happen. But I think for the most part, Ryan helsley has been really stinking good. He's locked down the ninth like you need him to be. Um, I don't always, I don't love fan graphs like power rankings, but sometimes I think it's interesting because they, they live update it, but they have him on the season as the number one closer and number two in the last 14 days. Um, and I think he's been about as good as you can ask for him. And he's not been like the dominant 2022 guy, but he hasn't been super far off. I would honestly say that there's an argument for Helsley to be an S tier right now, okay. because I don't really know what else you're asking from this guy. That's he's pitched fair. in nine games. Those are every single one of the Cardinals wins this season. If Ryan okay, Helsley hasn't taken the mound, the Cardinals haven't won. If Ryan Helsley has taken the mound, even in that one blown game, the Cardinals have gotten it done. So I I would say S tier. He's got a 163 ERA plus. He's been great. I would say he's one of the big bright spots of this team. He's anchoring what's been a really solid bullpen. I'm all in on Helsley's season. And if not for that one blow up, he's the best reliever in baseball so far this year because he's basically been unhittable. I like it. I, that convinced me. I feel, and kind of like the difference between S tier and an A tier us is S tier is like you c- literally could not ask for a better version of this player right now. Yes. They're top of the, they're top playing like top of the game, top of all of baseball, not just better, best, like um, the best version of Brendan Donovan probably isn't an S tier. Well, okay. Mm, the best possible Close. version of Ryan Fernandez right now, you're probably not going to put an S tier, but like I agree. the best possible version of Ryan Helsley, you can do that. And so that's where we'll put the S tier. I know it can be kind of confusing because an A is a really good performance, but like S tier is like we have zero quarrels at all. Like it's a, it's it's the A plus really is what that tier is. Um, I agree. I think Helsley deserves yeah. to be in there. Um, Zach Thompson. Mm, <laughs> I don't know. We haven't really gotten much from him. I, um, what's yeah. the full sample size? He's gotten 
13 it's been innings. Small. Yeah. 5.27 ERA. I would lean. I think I'd go C. That's actually what I'm thinking too. It's such a small sample size that it's really Agreed. hard to give a DF for. I don't think he's been that bad. And he also got beat up by the Dodgers. Like, okay, that's tough. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and our expectations for Zach Thompson, I know we're talking about, well, we said this isn't about expectations, but you know, you also kind of bake that in like a five ERA, 5.27 for a guy that's your fifth best starter or your fill in starter is a little bit different than if Sonny Gray had a five ERA right now. I think he's about average for that swing man, potentially number five starter, long reliever. I think he's about average right now. What would you say? Honestly, I'm I'm right where you are. I was thinking, see, there are a couple good signs so far. Like he's generated 15 strikeouts in less than in like 13 innings. So yeah, um, for a guy who everyone has talked about, you know, the strikeouts being a problem, like he just can't get them. He's actually had a lot of swing and miss this year compared to years past. I like that. I think that bodes well for the future if he can keep that up and obviously, you know, not face the Dodgers every night. That's a really good thing. <laughs> so helps. yeah, I would say C tier. Like. He hasn't been terrible. He hasn't been the reason the Cardinals have lost a bunch of games. There are players who will be D and F tier coming up, and Thompson's mm -hmm. not one of them for me. Yeah, I think uh <clears throat> totally agree there. Miles Michaelis is gonna be one. I'm really curious to see where you go. I'll let you lead. I kind of I already have my mind made up of where, where I put him in, but uh where where would you have Miles Michaelis? Ah, this is one of the harder ones. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards B tier. I, I feel oh, that Michaelis has kept the Cardinals in a lot of games. Um, uh, this is, I don't know. I, okay. I, I got to look at his stats one more time. I mean, the ERA is bad. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that's really tough. Maybe C tier. I feel like I he's kept in games, though. He's had a couple of quality starts now, and he's been screwed. Like, yeah. some of his outings, just it's not been his fault um he's he's given the cardinals 22 innings already this year which is a good thing might have a homer problem i'm not sure yet the sample's small we can say c tier the era is really high but yeah. he has kept the cardinals in basically every game he's pitched in except for that first game against the dodgers which that was a weird series um but yeah i'm i'm fine putting him in c tier yeah i think the back and forth you just did there is exactly why i put him in c tier because his reasons were like oh that's been helpful that's been good but that's been bad that's been really bad um i think that's about an average player you've got good, some good yeah. some bad it kind of averages out some days he goes out there and he gives you more than you hope for and some days he goes out there and he gives you less than you hope for and then there's some days he gives you exactly what you hope for and it's kind of even across the board and i I'd say this is probably about like average expect. Like if you told me this is what he did so far, I think the ERA is, is a little bit inflated for his actual performance. I think he's been better than that. Well, let's talk like about the time. inherited runners too. Yeah. Like Michaelis the other day was actually having a, a great start and he got absolutely screwed by a couple of balls that shouldn't have gotten through, a bad yeah. call that resulted in a walk, and then he got pulled with the bases loaded and Palante let everybody come around to score, which like I, I don't think he would have done that. It's just – it's a bummer. Um you know, whatever. But yeah, C is fine with me. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's let's roll with that then. And I think you could, uh, someone could make me a little bit of an argument of a B and a D even to me. Like I, I wouldn't be, hate either of them, but I think C is pretty pretty fair there. Yeah. Um, Wilson Contreras I think is a pretty easy A. I wouldn't I put him in S tier, especially the base running snafu today was oh, not great. Uh, he's also been hurt a little bit. Um, and his bat's cooled off a little bit, but he's still, um, what's his slug right now? He's a 500 slug and a 389 OBP. Yeah, so, or I guess this isn't fully updated from today. Fangraphs is a little slow, but he's close to 900 OPS. It's probably a little bit lower now. Yeah. And honestly, I can make an argument that you push him toward S, but I'm not. With the, how the team's playing, it's really hard to justify having three or four S tier guys. I'd agree with that. Um, but his defense around behind the play, I think, is why I feel tempted to push him up because he's just I mean, I kind of expected him to continue to be a net negative there. And he's actually been really, really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, he's been one of the bright spots. There's nothing bad I can say about Contreras. Uh, he's just gotten it done. He hit a double today uh, that the Cardinals ended up wasting, which was a real bummer. They had a good chance to get right back into the game. They didn't. Now, part of that was his fault. Uh, bad base running error. But Contreras has been great. You know, yeah. he's got like a 150 OPS plus nothing more you can ask for out of a guy um, who's forcing his way into the lineup. I love seeing him and Herrera both in the lineup today. I thought that was great. 
totally agree. And then I, I think I would make the exact same argument for Yvonne Herrera so far. His defense behind the plate hasn't been as good as Wilson's, but that's not a huge deal. But his bat has, again, been awesome. Um, I I would put him in A tier right with Wilson. Wait, hey, you an A tier guy, Yvonne, or a little bit lower? I don't think you'd put S tier. No, not S tier for Yvonne. Um, yeah, like somewhere in A, maybe B because he's cooled off a little bit, but Herrera's been great. Like yeah. I have no complaints about him. I would argue that right now the Cardinals may have the best catching tandem in the league between oh, I, I would Herrera agree. and Contreras. Yep. They've been fabulous. They've, I mean, the catching position has been the source of most of our offense this year, which is really funny because that's not what you want to do in the modern MLB, but you know, not a lot of complaints. I love it. I would say yeah, B B feels good for yeah, her. If you I'll want him A, I'm fine with A. But no, I'll throw B too because I uh, his his OPS was actually around 800 open and going to this game, and I believe it would be lowered again a little bit after yeah. this. Um, <clears throat> I think B. I mean, if you did this a couple of days ago, it's an A guy, right between A and B. Yeah. he's probably the safer bet here. Um, yeah, and uh, speaking of another A guy, I would a thousand percent Brendan Donovan A tier, pushing S tier, but again, I don't I think agree. he's been like well. Maybe it's been no, great, I'd probably, I'd probably he's keep cooled off a little bit. I would yeah. say a tier and we're not seeing a bunch of Donovan <clears throat> in the field. He's DHing a lot this year, which I would say takes away from his value just a little bit. Just that's enough fair. for me to put him in a, that's fair. And some of that's a little bit because of the hit by pitch and stuff he had going on. Ooh, yeah. Um, and some of it, I think is strategic on the Cardinals part to keep guys in the same position all the time, um, which I like. Um, but again, his bat's been so good for the most part. I mean, it's cooled off yeah. a little bit, but um, he's definitely an A tier guy to me. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I know he's cooled off, but I'm fully on board that he's going to be an all-star this year. And that <laughs> he's moving from a guy that national media kind of is like, Oh yeah. And they have Brendan Donovan. That's an interesting guy. He's kind of scrappy to like, Oh, they have Brendan Donovan, one of the best leadoff hitters in all of baseball, all star, super utility. They're going to start talking about him like he's Ben Zobris. Like he's going to finally start getting the respect he deserves nationally here mm -hmm. soon. Um, I'm a big, I know we've both been big Brendan Donovan guys, but I think this has like been his coming out party. Yeah. Um, and if he had, if he had stayed healthy last year, I think we would have been saying this the, the, nationally. They've been saying this at the end of the year. Obviously, the elbow kind of kicked him out for the rest of the year. Um, I believe he has a 141 entering today's game today. He had a 141 WRC plus in his last yeah. almost 300 at bats. So I'm, I'm, I'm team Brendan Donovan right now. That's for sure. Um, his, uh, spirit animal though, and look like Brandon Crawford. Um, I have a feeling we probably both agree where he should go here, but Sandy, I'll let you do the honors. It's just F tier. He's terrible. I, I don't know why he's on the roster. I'm sick of it. Get him out of oh here. Gosh. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't know when, when Tommy Edmund comes back, he needs to be gone. Yeah. Brandon Crawford needs DFA'd. He needs to um, be gone. <clears throat> I would even potentially make the argument that, especially if Dylan Carlson's going to be back pretty soon after, if, if Edmund's there first, that they should keep Victor Scott up and like figure it out for a couple weeks and have to put me Tommy Ed, I don't know they need to I, I, in my opinion they need to abandon Tommy only playing center field and he needs to be the guy that fills in for win whenever win yes. is off day but hopefully by the time Edmund's back they're confident when playing pretty much every day so it's kind of a once in the blue moon thing that Edmund plays shortstop I agree but yeah Crawford's a net negative and there's no reason he should be it's playing uh, right now they don't have another option you don't call up Thomas to JC to play once or twice a week that's agreed not, that doesn't make sense um you could go Jose for mean though so I'd rather I take Jose for me. This is a hot <clears> take. I'd rather have a guy like Matt Kaperniak up a guy who's basically lost his prospect status, who actually provides you value in the outfield and might be capable of playing center field. You don't need another shortstop. Brendan Donovan can fill in at shortstop and I'm sick and tired of watching Brandon Crawford. He is a, a it's so bad at the plate. It's just brutal to see him and he's getting way more starts than we thought he would. Yeah. I uh, I could see maybe a Caperna. I think Jose Fermin would make a lot of sense if they don't want to move Tommy to be the backup yeah. shortstop at all. But yeah, Brandon Crawford, your time in St. Louis, I don't think will be too much longer. Uh, Pedro Pajes, I don't even, that's D tier. Like this is kind of unfair, I guess, D tier. But yeah, you know, you it's not his that. fault. I like Pajes a lot for the I'm future. A, yeah. I feel like putting him in CT, C or T, C tier people would be kind of, that's weird. But D tier also feels kind of bogus to put him in. But yeah. 
I wish oh. we had a new not played tier because he literally yeah. hasn't played. But uh, Pais is exciting for the future. He's a great receiver. He's a good defensive mm. catcher. He's the next in a long line of like very solid catchers the Cardinals have developed. Not guys that yeah. are going to be all stars, but guys that are capable of making a roster. Yeah, and I, that's a good point. I saw in the chat. I'm just not going to rank Pajes. I'm going to put him on, keep him off the board. It's just not fair. There's that's one so bad. Like you can't do anything with that. Yeah. Um, Alec Burleson. How how do you feel about Alec Burleson so far? I feel like it's the same thing as last year where I feel that Burley goes up there, he hits the ball hard, I get excited, and then uh, he's out. And then also mm -hmm. every time Burleson pinch hits, it goes terribly. He's like 0 for infinity as a pinch hitter, and the Cardinals should never pinch hit him again, no matter yeah. what the numbers say, because for some reason it never works. It literally has never worked once <laughs> in his entire career, which now stretches into its third year, which is really funny to me, but also not funny at all because it just results in loss after loss. Yeah, uh, And I don't know if Ali actually knows that stat because he keeps doing it, but I don't know. Burleson to me, he's like a, like a probably D tier. The bat yeah, just agreed. hasn't been great. He hasn't forced the issue. He's not getting into the lineup and it's not even, you know, the team's fault. I can't complain about Burleson not playing because he hasn't done anything. Yep. Totally agree. Um, and then moving to large new part, I put him in like a B tier. I don't, again, I don't know what his OPS is after today, but it was in the high eight hundreds. Um, going into the game today, obviously he's only had 21 plate appearances, but um, <clears throat> the offense has a whole, hasn't really gotten it going since he got in the lineup, but I do think he's a key component of it starting to get going. Like I, I credit to Derek Gould being kind of pumping this for so long and being the like conductor of this train. But you look at the best offenses in the league and they have left, they have left-handed bats, plural. And oh, at least, at least that, if not also superstar talent, um, and especially if the Paul Goldschmidt and Orn Arnado not can be MVP level hitters, you have to have left-handed bats. And he's also found that when you go to the postseason, that right-handed bats consistently across the board regress from their regular season stats, but left-handed bats pretty much stay pretty neutral because it's just left-handed. Left-handed bats are one of the things you can trust the most against right-handed pitching, but then you get mm. to the playoffs and there's the bullpen specializations, all that stuff is tends to neutralize the right-handed bats a little bit more. So having a large new bar, Brendan Donovan and Nolan Gorman, I'm kind of, I know I kind of joked about it in private with you and Andrew at one point about maybe new bar is more expendable. Than I thought he was, but I, I don't think with how the Cardinals offense is structured right now, they can afford not to have those three left-handed bats. And I think he's yeah. kind of shown the recipe for why he's going to be a guy that helps transform this offense because I do believe it will get better. So I put him at B tier. After what about so. you? B tier is great for me. Newbar hasn't okay. played a ton of games because of the injuries, but he had that big homer in Arizona that was really exciting. And he's he's been good. Newbar yeah. is not the problem right now. Like I would say anyone in B tier or above, I can point at them and be like, you're not the reason we're not playing well. And Newbar feels like he fits that. Agreed. Um, I think Michael Ciani is a pretty easy one for me where it's a D tier. He's pretty much the exact same story as Victor Scott. They almost have identical batting average, identical OBPs. Michael Ciani is a little bit more slug, but they've worse. both been incredible defenders. Yeah. So. Ciani's, Ciani's offensively worse than Scott, which to me might justify F tier. Really? He's It's, I could, it's bad. Every time okay. Ciani comes to the plate, I'm like, oh my gosh, what okay. are we doing? I also am frustrated with Ciani because – the Cardinals continue to let him hit in big spots, and I think it's stupid. Uh, I, I I think we should put Ali Marble on this tier list at the end, and <laughs> I have my things to say about where he goes on this, but yeah. I'm tired of watching Siani. I know that he's a good defender, and he's made a couple of great plays that have come up big, and for a team that's scoring as little as the Cardinals are, which I believe what we're at 70 runs now in 20 yeah. games, so we're averaging just over three runs a game. You need to save every bit you can. And Siani's helped us do that. But Siani at the plate is a black hole and it's worse than Victor Scott. And he's, he doesn't have the Victor Scott level speed either on the base paths. Yeah. Here's a couple, here's a couple of random thoughts. Uh, first, uh, I will throw remind Andrew when I, I started creating this and in up nine, he created it. I had Ollie and John Mozeliak as two people we could rank. And so we should do that next time too. When we do these grades, cause I think it'd be interesting to add like this point in the year, how do we feel like Ollie's done and how do we feel like, Mosaic's done with this team. Um, I interesting thing in the chat from TK Burleson hasn't really provided much more in terms of offense than Siani has at this point. And I think Siani's defense, if Burleson's going to be in D, I think Siani deserves to be in D. But if Burleson's going to be in, or if Siani's going to be F, then I think Burleson should, Burleson and maybe even Scott should be down in F. Cause 
I mean, yeah. Scott, Scott and Siani are pretty much net equal right now offensively, and um, Siani arguably has been better defensively. Yeah, you could put you could put all of them in D tier, probably. I guess. Okay, that's fine. D tier Siani. I know it's semantics, but no, I, I see. We want to have the best list we can have. Yeah, that's what we do out here. That's right. Um, here's gonna be one that it's I hard. didn't think we'd be ranking as low as we potentially will be here. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt. So again, I should. I'm gonna pull up. Um, current stats i wish fan graphs was better at um updating than it does um, but it is my go-to site so i'm he's a 182 um batting average 516 ops right now <laughs> oh boy i say at least d it's yeah, been bad it, it's got to be d tier now the nice thing for goldschmidt is he has been better than all the guys in d tier which just tells you how many bad hitters the cardinals have rostered so far this year but I can't justify putting him in C tier. Like I, I just, you know, it, it feels like that's way too nice. Also, are we ordering them within the tier as to where they? Oh, they, we could. Because I would say, I, I like the way D tier is ordered right now. Actually, okay. Um, well, you could put Burleson after Siani. That's fine with me. And I would probably have Thompson behind Michaelis. I like that. Yeah, and I'd probably have Newt behind Herrera, Donovan yep. behind Contreras, barely. Huzley. Yeah. Yep. I like yeah, that. I feel so good far. about this. <clears throat> Yeah. Yep. Matt Carpenter. I mean, D F. I don't know. Which Maybe D. Better. Carpenter's had a couple of base hits. I would. I might put Carpenter above Burley. Yeah. I feel better about Seattle Carpenter Burley? as a pitch hitter than either of those okay. two right now. Okay. Right now, I the like defense it. isn't there, but hey, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to click the holding Mo's water video, but who would have thought in this tier list we'd be saying we miss Matt Carpenter right now compared to different people on the Cardinals bench? But that's where we're at. Yeah. So that's that's uh that's not fun, but it's okay. Jojo, they, I love Jojo Romero. I love Jojo Romero. God. I know he had that bad in any other day, but I still say A. I I think he's been great. Let me let me get a look at the numbers one more time. He didn't yeah, pitch yeah, today, A tier. Right? It's gotta be A tier. Yeah, he didn't pitch he, today. he has 13 strikeouts and nine and two thirds innings, one eight six year right. Fangraph says him as the third best reliever in baseball so far this year, 14th um over the last 14 days. I think he's been awesome. He's so, been fabulous. And and um, the fact that we got Jojo Romero for Edmundo Sosa is so funny. And like <laughs> it's hilarious to me. This dude only yeah. we only knew about him because he smashed cans of Red Bull over his head. And now he's a guy True. that legitimately is one of the best relievers in the National League and nobody knows it. It's he's he's fabulous. It's interesting too because it's like Mo is in uh and Michael Gersh are like the master class of these weird small moves that everyone's yeah. kind of like huh? and then like the player they get in return is awesome. So yeah. like big time big big Jojo Romero fan. So excited. Whenever him, Kittridge or Helsley end in the game, I have full oh, trust. Kittredge. I'm so it excited. changes from there, but I yeah. feel great anytime. Uh, Matthew Libertor, I put in C, I think. He's got a 3.52 ERA in the year. Um, he's gotten into some trouble that he's gotten out of, so I think he's got a little bit lucky. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I feel like as a second left-handed reliever out of your bullpen, you don't really ask for much more than that. I think it's pre he's been pretty average, like pretty replacement level-ish. I don't. Where would you have land on that? I would I would put him above Michaelis in C tier. I'd put him at the very top of C tier. Okay. I've actually I like that. felt really good about having Libertor in the game so far this year. I feel that he's maintaining his velocity. Granted, he's not starting, so that's probably why. But he feels to me like if he's going to be a reliever, which is a bummer because he's a guy that you want to be a starter, but if he's going mm -hmm. to be a reliever, he might be a really good reliever. And at some point down the line, the Cardinals might be – they, they might have found a guy who can be a high-leverage reliever. I love yeah. the fact that he brings 98 from the left side. He's got a ton of movement. He's got a good curveball. So these are all things I like about him. And this year has been probably the best season he's had so far. The sample size is small, of course. Um, but he's not the reason we're losing games. Yeah. Where would you have Lance Lynn? That's so hard. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I feel like he's a cusper between B and A, B and A for me. Oh, B and A. You're, probably. I, I might put him right between Herrera and Newt Bar. Because okay. he's, he's provided, he's gobbled innings for the Cardinals, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. And he's had two starts that I can point to and be like, wow, that was literally perfect. Can't ask for yeah. anything more than that. He was great the other night against Oakland. Granted, it's Oakland and he gave up a bunch of long fly balls. But what matters with Lance Lynn, and that's what we said all offseason, is just the fact that the team is winning when he's pitching. 
And that's the only thing we care about. It's not even whether he gets to win. It's whether the team gets the win. And the team is winning when Lance Lynn's on the mound. So he's doing his job. And again, he's he's 218 ERA so far. Like I know hasn't it's it's probably that's the ERA is probably a little bit better than the actual pitching performance he's done so far. But at the same time, like you got to give him credit where credit's due. So I think a B tier for sure here. And you love that he's eating those innings. Does he lead the the team in innings right now? Um, Probably. No, he's he's an inning behind exactly one inning behind Michaelis right now. Okay. but I'd give it a B here for sure. Yeah. Kyle Gibson, I'd give probably toward the bottom of, or like right maybe between Michaelis and Thompson for C tier. Um, maybe even yeah. this. I don't know. Kyle Gibson has like the ERA is bad, but yeah. the Miami the Miami start hurt him. And actually, let's let's be. I'm, I'm gonna be really honest right now. If the Cardinals offense was doing what we all thought it would be doing, we, that wouldn't have been that bad a start. He gave up mm-hmm. seven runs in six innings. If the Cardinals offense was capable of scoring five runs a game, like we expect them to, or more, then they would have been down by two or three when he came out of the game. Like yeah. he lost that game, but at the same time, the offense also lost that game by only scoring three runs. Yeah. I would go, I think I'd go right in between Michaelis and Libertor. Um, because I do think mm-hmm. outside of like, like he's, I mean, again, we can, we can parse this out. We can change it. I'm going to put him there for now. I feel like he's had like two bad innings, which at the same time, like you can't be a pitcher that has one really bad inning every start. Like, is that true? It's going to be bad, yeah. but I feel like he's had that really weird inning against Miami. I think he had one other bad inning this year, but otherwise he's been pretty productive yeah. and had that really good start against San Diego. Yeah. Oh, the San Diego I, start was fantastic. I loved that. I feel pretty good. I f- honestly feel a little in a weird life field. I don't know. Maybe he should go below Michaelis. I would put him between Michaelis and Thompson yeah, personally I think you're right. because the, the volume I just can't ignore. And that's better than yeah. what Thompson's given us. And yeah. like you said, he's had really good starts. The inning against Miami was super weird because he gave up those two, three run bombs. Um, and it was like, well, the damage could have been limited if the sequencing was different, right? Like if he gives yeah. up the two homers and then, walks the house and gets out of the inning that might only be two runs or three yeah. runs, but instead it ended up being six, which just bad luck for him. True. Agreed on that. All right, Sandy, go on your Andrew, Andrew Kittredge. Uh, are we putting him above Romero or above yeah, Romero? maybe above even above Romero? Donovan. Oh, wow. Kittredge has been so good this year. I, I love, I'm an Andrew Kittredge enjoyer. Yeah. He's a 1.29 ERA in the year so far. Only seven innings. So uh, JoJo's given a two and a, a two and a tooth this early in the season. Yeah. Um, they're about equal strikeouts wise. Um, oh, and Romero has a better whip than Kittredge too in a little larger sample size. I I think I might argue Romero has been better than Kittredge. I for me it's the eye test with Kittredge. That's fair. because like Romero, as good as Romero is this is going to sound like really nitpicky and we're talking about guys in a tier. So it has to be Romero for me. I don't know why he's so good. Like he's great. And I love watching him pitch, but like the stuff plus and and all that. And I know that's not results. That's the metrics that go into the results, but Kittredge, like I can tell that he's just a dog and I know that he's good every time he's out there. Um, So I don't know for me, Kittredge is up there, but if you want to put Romero over him, that's justifiable too. They've both been incredible this year. No, I, I think I think that's fair. I test that. I think I would go that direction as well. Um, Sonny Gray, easily the best S tier guy so far, right? Yeah. Like, he's yeah. Just kind of the team. So I mean, good. He's been awesome. I'm my so gosh. happy. This is, I love Sonny Gray. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm just so excited he's a Cardinal. Yep. And I, th- I just, I have all these memories of last offseason where people were like, yeah, Sonny Gray's, Sonny Gray's kind of like a number three starter. And Shut it's like, up. what are you talking yeah. about? So, that's yeah, just yeah oh my gosh anyways he's so good yeah so big big sunny gray guys obviously he's not gonna be a zero era the whole year but i, I mean wish. he's on a pitch limit coming back from an injury and he's been dominant i mean you gotta gotta love it yeah. so um big sunny gray at the top of the list here uh john king pretty F-tier. easy f yeah F-tier. i don't think there's a question put him above anymore. crawford though because i hate crawford more than <laughs> i hate john king <laughs> Uh, I agree. It's it's tough. Riley O'Brien, um, I don't remember what his stats finished out at. He looked um, good. 
but I don't think the stats were great, but the sample size is so small. Yeah, it is really small. I'm pulling his up right now. I'm a big fan, though. I'll say that. Me too. Um, He was a force. Wait, hold up. He gave oh. up one run in his oh. one inning of work. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't really do much with that. I, I mean, I guess I give it a D for now. Yeah, it's, it's almost Pajes level where it's really hard to actually rank him. But I mean, we could, if he's only pitched one inning, we could just not rank him. Yeah, I, I honestly would. I'd be fine putting him at the top of D tier because the stuff is so good, and I okay. really like him. Like, I'm Let's really excited to have O'Brien back. To me, he's yeah. he's like, like you've been talking all offseason and the beginning of the season about how Jordan Walker is like the X factor that makes this offense good because it's just another good bat. For me, a guy like Riley O'Brien or Keenan Middleton is the totally. reason that this bullpen can take the next step and be one of the best units in baseball because he is an elite arm. <clears throat> I totally agree with that because uh, there's two different things they had a problem with last year. One, they didn't have the like two to three guys you could go to in high leverage at any given time. They at most yeah. would have two guys, usually only one guy they could trust at a single time. Obviously, you can name Helsley Hicks, Romero, and Gallegos all at different points last year, but they were rarely ever good at the same time correct but then also the bullpen depth was terrible where you're like so seventh bad. eighth guy coming out or just like okay you're praying they don't give up three runs this inning correct <clears throat> when if oh there's a world where o'brien ends up being the eighth or seventh guy in this bullpen and that's awesome so yeah. um big fan here um jordan walker i think probably d tier um maybe f though um i'm leaning d because the defense has been good yeah, it's been better at least. It's above I, average. I don't feel like they've really given him an opportunity to fail there. Would you put him above? I think above Scott, but not much. Yeah, because the offense has been like better than Scott's. You know. Yeah. yeah, it's disappointing. I think you you asked me earlier if I'm worried about. I don't know if this is before we started recording or during. I'm worried about Walker, um, and not worried long term that he can't become a star. I'm more so just worried that this is. I thought this. Yeah, that this could be a year where he pops off as a 120, 125, maybe even higher WRC plus guy. I mean, the 90th percentile outcomes for him this year was the best hit on the Cardinals by far. He's not been anywhere near that. <clears throat> so, again, long term, I think he's going to be a star, but this year he might be more like a league average or about the same bat. So, um, I'm kind of fine with that. Oh, Nolan Gorman's not on here. Oh, my. Oh, no. That's oh, not brutal. Good. We can just That's rename brutal. Pajes Gorman. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, we can add him in later. Um, Where would you let's put use, Gorman? I'd put him in C for now. Yeah, because like, this is the player good. he is, and He's so streaky. Yeah. Um, here, how about I'm going to stop screen sharing for a second. Talk a little bit about. Um, how well you've seen from Gorman this year so far and how you're kind of thinking about things with him. I'm going to, I'm going to add him in there. Well, for me, Gorman, it's, it's frustrating because you can tell that he's not, I don't know. You, you can tell that he's not himself at the plate right now. That's obvious, but it's not as bad as last June was, which was just tragically bad. You know, he's not that terrible. Um, the defense has been good. It feels like he's taken another step forward. I love that he's just bigger than everybody else. <laughs> um, it, but you know, I'll answer fix it later. You know, it's, it's oh, I'll add Ollie and Mo in here too. I've got them. We're Ollie definitely tier listing Ollie, but he's got to be last. Because, okay, we got it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Gorman has just been fine. I expect him to heat up later in the season, and when he does, he's going to be the best hitter on the team for two weeks because that's kind of what Gorman does. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited to just gorm, but I haven't gormed much this season and I'm a little bummed about it. I'm not going to lie. I, I expect I more much. Yeah. I haven't had, I, I literally have sent the gorm meme like once this whole season, which is a real bummer yeah. because I like texting that out when Gorman is popping off. True. So, you know. Yeah. I again, I totally agree here. I think it's just one of the things you got to be aware of with Nolan Gorman. I don't think people have had enough time with him yet to really understand. I, 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 would, I would think people would understand it by now, but I, I, the way people talk about him, I don't think they fully understand how streaky of a guy he is. And that's just a part of his game and you just kind of have to deal with it. Um, and it sucks. I mean, I, I wish it wasn't that way, but it's who he is. So, um, yeah. and, but when he's on, he's on and he's awesome. So we're just going to roll with that. Um, 
<laughs> yes. a, that's the picture for all of you. Yes. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. You're welcome, guys. Sorry that we uh, we didn't have him on there. So Nolan Arenado, um, I actually think maybe up to C, potentially C now with the last few games. I would say above. Um, C. I'd put him in. I'd put him after Newt Bar. Oh really? Three hundred right now. What's his OPS? Seven forty um, or something like that. Seven twenty four. Oh, okay. So it fell as the game went on. Yeah, I think at the very top of C tier. I think so too. Because I, I feel that personally, Arnado is not the reason we're losing games. Like Arnado, he's got a long hit streak now. Um, he's taken his walks, which is really nice. The power's not there, and that's the real problem. Yeah. And if he doesn't have power anymore, he's not the same player. So maybe C tier is reasonable. But I don't know. I, I feel that he's been pretty solid he's getting in the lineup a lot too not a lot of off days from arnado which i really like to see like he is reliable he's out there he's at least producing at some level which yeah. can't be said for everybody agreed yeah it's a weird one because i think people are gonna look at this list and they're gonna be like whoa he's been so bad what are you talking about but i just think he's quietly heated up again if this was based off expectations he'd be df but as an overall yeah. player this year that's where you got to put him as C here. So I, I'd, I'd go C. He's hitting close to 300. I think people need to know that. I don't think people do. I think the narrative around Arnado is that he's cooked. And the narrative around Arnado is that he's like this black hole at the plate. But that's not true. There's just yeah. a power outage, which is very yeah. different than him being the worst hitter on the team, which he's objectively not right now. He's yeah. probably a top four hitter in the lineup right now. Like yeah, OPS-wise, one, yeah. two, three, four... He's the fifth or sixth OPS on the team right now. But um, there's more the batting average. Yeah. Way more mm -hmm. volume. Than, and the batting average is high, which is important to me. Yeah. So agreed. Yeah. Um, where would you I think I'd put Gallegos in C tier. I think he's had some Gallegos annoying outings where he gives up runs, but again, yeah. I also think he's been really helpful in some. So I don't think it's a DF. I just don't. I mean, he's. I think he's clearly emerged as the fourth guy in this bullpen when he could have fought for second or third. Sure. You could argue potentially even less, but I think it's like a clear tier gap right now where it's Helsley, Romero, Kittredge, tier gap. Gallegos is in that next group. Um, yeah. Yeah, call me call me old fashioned. Gallegos has uh, been attributed two wins this year, so he's come up in two huge spots and done his job, which I think is a really big deal. Yeah, so I'm fine. Would you put him here, like above the Gibson Michaelis, below that? Uh, hmm. maybe I would split Gibson and Michaelis. Okay, I'd be fine with him right there because I, I think like he he gets more hate than he deserves, and it's been that way for the last three years with Geo. Yeah. And I'm fine with what he's done this year. The ERA is high, but it's going to drop. Geo is so reliable. At the end of the season, we're going to be talking about a guy whose ERA is somewhere between three and four, and he'll blow a couple of games because it's what he does, and he'll save a couple of games. And there'll be a couple times where he comes in in a crazy jam, and his slider just looks perfect, and he strikes out the side. And that's kind of yeah. what you get with Geo. And I, I'm a Geo supporter. That's a known thing. <laughs> I've been one of his biggest fans in St. Louis for a long time, um, and I think he's been fine this year. Yeah. Yep, I think he's been fine. Um, Andre Pallante, I think I put D. D. It's just, it's been tough. Um, it's a bummer think, after all the buzz he got this offseason. Yeah, I think I put him above Carp, but below Scott Walker, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just been, it's been frustrating. I thought, I was pretty excited about him coming into the year. I agree. Um, and 6.43 RA right now. I mean, you can, you can make an argument for F. But, I don't know if I'd have him quite in F. Oh, well, yeah. no, no, because he gave up all those inherited runs and those didn't get charged to him and they should have been. Oh, so, yeah, I'd put him in F, yeah, actually. Put him, over, put him over King, but F yeah. tier. He's been bad. Like, he's been he's been unfortunately bad. Yeah, yikes. And his stuff doesn't, it's a weird with him. It's like, he's like the op, he's like the pitching version of Alec Burleson where he gets the ground ball and he gets the result, but it does not work out. It's just... It's kind of mind boggling. I wonder if well, he's Matt's the same but... way. Mm. Funny that he's following. Yeah. Cause we, we need to have a conversation about Matt's start today. I thought he pitched really well. Yeah. I mean, like, I put him in, I put him in C or B tier. I put him in B tier, um, maybe right below Lynn. Oh, you earlier put him above today, Newt? Yeah. I would have had him above Lynn earlier today. The ERA jumped, okay. but I thought he pitched well. Like I, watching That's the fair. game today, I was really upset with the fact that Matt's just had terrible luck. 
he gave yeah. up like like five or six hits that were hit below 85 miles an hour. Um, that ball up the middle that resulted in a couple of runs scoring, like both rallies the A's had were just stupid. Um, and there's really nothing Matt's could have done. He gave up, I think, three big hits all day. That double to Langoliers was unfortunate, but those guys shouldn't have been on because both those balls were just one of them was off the end of the bat, a line drive that got past Gorman. And the other was that slow grounder up the middle from Geloff. And I don't know. I am yeah. obviously getting into it too much, but no. I, I've really enjoyed watching Matt's this year. I think he's been one of the bright spots. Yeah, I agree. Um, yep. I, I like, I like all your, your thinking on that one. I think in part of the reason why he just goes below Lynn here is the fact he doesn't eat the innings. That's kind of tough, yeah. but um, yeah. Fernandez, I'd put above Libertor. Um, he's a 3.18 ERA, seven strikeouts and five Absolutely. and two thirds, and he's strikeout stuff than Libertor so far. Um, <clears throat> obviously, he hasn't been given a ch- much many chances this year, so I wouldn't like you could make an argument stats wise he's a B tier guy, but I just don't think the opportunity. It only he's enough of a sample size to go that high up. Um, and also, if this was expectations, I'd a thousand percent have him in B tier because Will Five Agreed. picks typically don't give you anything, so he's been pretty good. I like it. Um, I'm going to unshare my screen here for a second because I want to add one more thing to grade. Um, oh, no. But I want us to talk. No, no, no. It, I think it'll be good. Let's okay. talk for a few minutes about what, how you felt about Mason Wynn this year. And so we'll give so the grade. Good. We'll talk it through. So let, let's talk about the grade. But then I also want to make sure we talk about like what are our long-term expectations for him? Because I kind of thought this is the kind of win we would see in a year at the plate, maybe two years. He's been awesome, and I know it's early so this season. Good. He just looks like a completely different hitter. And again, he's done this at every level, and every level people start to get like, oh, maybe he can't hit, and then he hits. And it's like, okay, so yeah, go on your uh, – how do you feel about Mason Wynn so far? Wynn has been so good. He leads the team in war right now. The defense is amazing. He's had some bad luck defensively. Yeah. Um, okay, the error the other night, I thought it was ridiculous to give him an error there because if he doesn't throw that ball a million miles an hour – like no one else even makes that like makes the play close. And mm-hmm. so I thought that should have been a base hit. And I normally side um, on, on the side of like, there should be more errors and less base hits, but I thought that should have been a hit. Um, win has been great. He, he's like thrown out some runners. He's had some great turns on double plays. I love watching him in the field. His arm is something to behold. He's been good on the base paths. He's caused a little havoc. He's stolen a couple. And then at the plate, I can't say enough about when he took some walks today too. The, the plate discipline is incredible this year. It's, it's so good. He's very selective. He's not just swinging at everything. Last year, I was very upset watching Win. It was just bad. There's no other way to put it. It was just terrible. And like you said, completely different hitter. He's batting 360 right now. He's not going to hit 360 all year. We know that. He's not going to have a 145 OPS plus at the end of the year. We know that. But if Mason Wynn plays the defense he's played and has a 110 to 115 WRC plus, that's a super, super valuable player. And right now he's 35 points above that. He's been yeah. so good. There's an argument that he's been a top five shortstop in baseball to this point in the season. I love it. Where would you put him in a tier? Like top of it, below Contreras? Above Contreras for me. Okay. I, yeah. I, I like I considered having him in S tier. Mm. He's been so good. And the numbers are just so good. Like I can't say enough how happy I am with Wins production. And the fact that he's still hitting eighth is a little frustrating to me. I would have slid him. Well, he is, he's hitting seventh now, I think, right? I thought he hit eighth again. Did he hit seventh today? Um, He was eight. Okay, he was eighth today. But yeah. he's been hitting seventh the last few games. I would have slid him up. I, I I honestly wouldn't feel terrible hitting win like sixth or even like on a day where Donovan doesn't play, even hitting win first. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right now. I mean, it's hard because they're not going to move Goldschmidt out of the two spot right now. Yeah, Herrera's. I mean, Herrera's still got an 811 OPS right now, so he's he's been great. Gorman, you're probably not going to bat eighth, um, especially at the lefty lefty at the end there with him and Siani. You're probably not going to do it. I think today's lineup it made sense, but like when Walker's in, I definitely put him above Walker. Um, Can you believe we're saying that? Yeah, it's wild. That's crazy. And like that air he made. Um. Okay, Mason, you're already making plays like that. And I know the throw is inaccurate, but like that is an incredible play he made. And the, the double plays he's turning, he's yeah. 
I mean, he threw it super hard and threw it inaccurate, but he had to throw it that hard. He's he's figured out to, when to pick his spots, and he's not just gunning it every single time. He does it when it's needed. He makes the routine plays look uh, easy. Um, he makes hard plays look routine at times. He's been awesome. And then, again, I expect his batting average to come down. I don't expect him to be an 873 OPS guy. I don't sure. even expect him to be an 800 OPS guy this yeah. year. But I kind of was like he could be a league average I think a league average would be good for him this year. I thought he could be a below league average guy. He's been awesome. So Mason Wynn, I mean, again, we're grading him how he's played so far. He has been an A so far. You cannot ask anything more for Mason Wynn. Again, we put S tier as like not just the best version of themselves, but they're arguably one of the best players in baseball. I mean, you could argue he's one of the top shortest times right now, but I, yeah, I think that'd be a stretch to put him in the S tier. I think you'd agree on that. The power's Um, not there for the S tier for me. If Mason Wynn had hit a couple of home runs right now, I might have him in S tier. Yeah. So I'm loving Mason win right now. I think my long term, I'm kind of like, okay, like I still put Jordan Walker as the most important young player on this team. Sure. Brendan Donovan's number two to me, and I'm not gonna go off that right now. I agree. Large Newt bar, I probably put it third. Once you get to four, though, I think Mason Wynn, I think he's got to be the guy now. Like, Yvonne has definitely ri- risen in my rankings. Gorman's still important. Gorman's still important, and I still love his ceiling. But at the same time, I just think he is a, sh- he's not going to, he's probably not going to be a superstar bat. He's probably going to be Kyle Schwarber esque, where it's really, really good at times and really, really bad at times. Yeah. You always, I mean, he's a very valuable player. I'm not trying to act like he's not. But Mason Wynn, with that defense at shortstop, and the potential yeah. of his bat because he does have power. It's not like he's he's never gonna. I think he can get really into it. Good. If he's a 15, 20 home run guy with a high, high like a two eighty batting average, Gold Glove defensive shortstop. That's you can't really find those guys. You can find a Jock Peterson to re- be kind of like Nolan Gorman. Yeah, you can't. Mason wins don't grow on trees. Not that Gorman does either. But I, again, we're splitting hairs with how talented these guys are. Yeah. But I would say Mason wins the f- clear five, and I think he's a four and. There could be a day where I start pushing large new bar. So um, <clears throat> Mason wins awesome. So now let's let's do a little bit bigger picture. Who do we want to start with? Ollie, Mo, or the team grade? Let's do the team grade since we've just okay. done all the players. Yeah. What would you say? C tier for me. Thousand percent agree. And I'd probably put it both toward the bottom of C tier because it's like record wise. Okay, you know, it's average. Let's do this. Like, yeah. What player best exemplifies the way the Cardinals have played this year? Ooh. I would say it's Miles Michaelis. And so I would put the team right behind Miles Michaelis. I was going to say Nolan Gorman because okay. it's average, it's frustrating. Yeah. And you know, there's so much more there, but it's not happening right now. That's where I kind of put them as like Nolan. Okay. Gorman. Um, yeah. Because like Gorman's a 625 OPS guy, which it's like, okay, whatever. It's like you take it, but like you're not happy about it. If anything, you're you know, they don't feel great about that. Um, yeah. Anyways, I, but I like the Michaelis is kind of like that too. I put them in, definitely put them in there. So, yeah. all right, Mo, do Mo or Ollie? Do we want to do second? Or I want to save Ollie for last. Okay. <laughs> so oh gosh, John Mosellock. Well, I... let's let's think about. <clears throat> we have to we have to wait more heavily the moves he's made in the last off season, right? Yeah. Cause you can't so, change. We can, we're not going to grade him for the Randy Rosary correct. Trade right now. Like, so it's not fair. Sonny gray is in S tier. Yep. Uh, Andrew Kittredge is in a tier. Yep. Jojo Romero, who he got very recently still, I guess that's a little long ago, still a tier though. And still a guy who Mo has not gotten his flowers for yep. Mason Wynn, a prospect that they are committed to is in yep. a tier. He's playing well. Yvonne Herrera, a guy who they have pivoted to and given more opportunities to. Lance Lynn is in B tier, and he's been great. Um, Even guys like Fernandez, who were really happy with his performance so far. Uh, Gibson, you know, whatever. And then you get down to the bottom here. Carpenter hasn't impacted at all. Scott hasn't done that much and has kind of been bad. And then Crawford doesn't even count because he's basically not on the team anymore. But I would say a lot of good and relatively little bad. Agreed. Um, I think the only, the only, the only bad we haven't talked about that you could potentially associate with it is like, he could have gone out and gotten like, 
Yeah, like gone out. Like I mean, even in the center field situation, he could have gone out and got a Michael A. Taylor to back Kevin up. Kevin like when, Kevin yeah. Kier, But like even before that, like in spring training, all these injuries are happening. They went the Victor Scott route, or they went Dylan Carlson, and then the last second had to go Victor Scott. They could yeah. have went out and got like a Michael A. Taylor type. Um, they could have gone out and gotten a top. Um, I don't even know if Tyler. They could have done maybe a Dylan C's trade, like, but like the pitching so far hasn't yeah. been the problem. And the the area you like most of us would say is the big problem is the offense. But I mean, what moves were there that he would have that made sense to upgrade the offense this offseason? Yeah. There really weren't. So the and offense if, is just underperforming. If I see a comment about keeping <clears throat> Tyler O'Neill, I actually no. will lose it because Tyler yeah. O'Neill, it just wasn't going to work in I mean, St. Louis. And you all wanted Tyler O'Neill gone. So Everybody stop. wanted Tyler O'Neill gone. Yeah, so stop don't. posting videos of yeah. him hitting home runs and tweeting at the Cardinals. Well, it's funny we're saying that because our uh, our third man of the group is one of the people tweeting it from our account. Yes, I know. So, but that's not me. I'm not doing that. It's not me either. Um, I think I'd put him bottom of B tier. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Bottom yeah. of B, top of C for me feels good. Where, which one do you want to do? Top of C or bottom of C? Well, let's say, let's say bottom of B because... Okay what he did where he he took the biggest problem on the team which was the rotation and so far it's been either the biggest strength or the second biggest strength on this team yeah and the other big problem is the defense and the defense has been great here here's maybe where we could potentially if we want to talk about potentially moving down to see a couple things i guess did he sell too low on tyler o'neill i don't i don't think there was a market there wasn't a market. I don't think there was a market no, I, at all. Okay. Then the other thing I would say potentially is I don't think we think there's a huge ceiling at this team. No. So do you put him in B? He's made good moves to put them into a position where they could be a 500 or above 500 team. And the moves have done that, mm. that he's made. Mm. But yeah. is that a B? I Because I, 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 mean, I initially said B. I think maybe top of C would make more sense, but I'm, I'd been different. I'm good either way. I can, I can go with C. The reason I would actually lean B still is because when you look at how flawed the team was and what he was actually working yeah, with that's fair. and the fact that like, I don't know, I don't think we, we say this a lot, but I don't think most Cardinals fans get it. Like he works under serious constraints from ownership and it's, it's really yeah. not fair um, some of the things people say about yeah. Mosaic and the job he's done, like Would ownership maybe... restricts him heavily, and yeah. the guys that he brought in are succeeding. Would you maybe though like to go back, like even though we're not going to grade him on the moves he did make before, like part of the reason it's such a flawed roster is his own fault. That's true. That's true. And so it's like in like the budget constraints. Well, maybe not. Don't pay Miles Michaelis all that money. You know, yeah. Like, there's, yeah. I think there are some things he's done to himself too that are part of the problem. So that's where maybe again, I, and I'm, you know, I'm usually more positive about Mo than other people yeah. are, but I think I'm looking at this list and it feels a little bit weird to have him in B, even though as we talk it out, it I'm makes fine sense. With, I'm fine with top of C tier then the very I'm, top I'm, though. I'm more playing devil's advocate and all of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm seriously good either way. You make the final call. You, if we stick B, I'm good with that. I'm but. leaving him in B tier. Okay. I, I'm going cool. with my gut. I feel that Mo has been good. Now, I want you to start with Ali and tell me what you think about Ali Great. before I tell you what I think about Ali this year. It's hard. It is hard. Um, okay. You can't... The offensive woes are not his fault. Correct. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put that on him. The injuries that they've had are not his fault. Roster construction is not his fault. So you got to grade him based on the moves he can make. The Mason Win stuff. The more they talk about it, it makes it feel like it's not just Ollie that's sitting him out because they're giving this weird back thing now. Um, but that is a weird one. That's one of the decisions I've not been a big fan of. Um, <clears throat> why am I blanking? There's been some other odd ones that he's made. Um, uh, there are a lot of odd moves he's made. Literally I don't know why every I'm... single series there have been weird moves. That yeah, made. I think I'd put him at the top of D or bottom of C. I don't think he's an F. I don't um, think he's an F, but I I have I have a list of grievances that are okay. Go for it, because you're I, I'm my brain my brain is just blanking right now. I know there's other stuff I just can't think. Of yeah. It. So for me, uh, this year line of construction has been weird at times. The Cardinals are just so slow 
to make changes when it's I'll time it. to make a change it's it's bothering me oh did you see the do it or the yeah. ownership yeah that's good <laughs> um so for me like like lineup construction has been weird this year uh ali lets guys who shouldn't hit in big spots hit in big spots it drives me up a wall why the heck does siani hit sometimes with the game on the line why was carpenter hitting with the game on the line in la twice why mm -hmm. why like so that really bothers me. Bullpen management has been really questionable at times. I understand that it's not always his fault that guys aren't available, but I feel that he could do a better job with what he has. And I think this is a really good unit. So I don't know why it's working the way it's working. Also, my biggest gripe with Ollie this year, can we just win a dang challenge once in our lives? It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> the Cardinals lost their challenge in the first inning today. And then there were two plays they should have challenged later in the game that we weren't able to. And one of those resulted in the A's scoring a run, which is another issue for the team. Uh, I think that's something like Ali, just make the right decision challenge level impossible because everything he does backfires. And that's not necessarily his fault. I think sometimes he does make the right decision and it just goes wrong. But for me, Ali's in D tier right now. Like a random number generator could do a better job with some of the things that have been happening because it feels to me that he is right less than half the time. Mm. Okay, I <laughs> I think I, I'm I'm not as um as passionate about also our views today like are like the, <laughs> the the different like the backgrounds I've changed it so much it's really so funny bad. um but I think it's important because I'm adding one more person that I want to give a shout out to oh, um no. I think it's important um, I'm just going to do it before I give my all this stuff. Chip Carey for fighting through so good. The, the voice stuff. And I just think he's awesome. I, I like Chip. I like him way more. I'm going to put him in A tier. He's been awesome. Chip so. had one of my favorite jokes that he's made all season. He makes these like little under the radar jokes. And today he was said something about Brad Thompson said something about the green seats. And Chip's like, well, our green seats are a lot better than theirs. And at least people sit in them. Like, I thought that was just so funny. Yeah. I love it. Oh. He's he's awesome. So I'll, I'll give him an A tier this Come year. Come on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think we give the Ollie a little more crap for his stuff than he does. One thing I really appreciate about him, we can disagree with the decision making, but usually he's the type of guy, and I, I trust the beat writers on this a lot too, that will sit down and explain the thought process on things. And sometimes, man, like there would be things that everyone the the golden calf that is mike shill where he do it and people call him on it and he gets so upset and pissed off and not really even give you a yeah. reason but he just like don't question it like i know what i'm doing and i feel like ollie might give the like people want to call him pompous and stuff sometimes i don't go that far i think sometimes i he's agree just with very, that. like he's just like a like this is my decision making but he gives you sound reason he gives you thought through reasoning so there's a reason behind the decisions he's making i don't think he just does stuff blindly but again there's been stuff this year i have not agreed with so I give top a D. Um, and yeah, then uh, DeWitt's, I mean, D tier, F tier, I don't know. Yeah, like bottom of D tier. Because they, they let the team spend like a little bit of money, but it's yeah. their fault that a lot of this goes on. So I, I personally want to put DeWitt below Crawford. But... <laughs> okay, how about the fact that they're talking about asking for public money for these stadium renovations? When mm. we've seen it not work for a lot of teams in recent years, and yeah. the DeWitts have no leverage with the city of St. Louis because of how ingrained the Cardinals are here. So I wonder how this is going to play out. It's not like the yeah. like the Kansas City <clears throat> teams where they can kind of threaten yeah. to move across the border. Like the Cardinals can't yeah. do that. To be fair, something that um, is in like a something people don't give really much credit for is when they built Bush Stadium 2, I believe they either didn't take any public funding or took very minimal public funding compared yeah. to pretty much every stadium project that's yeah. happened so far. Um, but again, I'm, I never really feel bad for owners wanting to build a stadium. Like, no, it's like, okay, like taxpayer dollars, whatever I can get into all that. But um, how do we feel about the list? I mean, you got two S tier, one, two, three, four, five, six, A tier, five B tier, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten C tier with the Cardinals in there, one, two, three, a ten D tier with Twit and Ollie in there, and then three F tier with King, Crawford, Palante. It feels pretty on brand for a team that's basically 500. That yeah, you, you see, it's nine and ten. You see the positives, but you'll see a lot of the negatives. And also yeah. one of the A tier guys is Chip Carey. So <laughs> and one of the B, I mean, B tier is 
Uh, no, but Chip anyways. Carey's great. He deserves his flowers. He's been he really good. I love listening to Chip Carey, and I was so skeptical when they brought him in too. Me too. And I feel like it was kind of like he's like he, you have to kind of get used to his personality. Sure, but once I did. He just makes me laugh a lot. And I like, know my wife doesn't really care about baseball, but like she'll watch it and she like laughs at the stuff that him and Brad Thompson do. Like she thinks Brad it's funny, Thompson so. and Chip Carey are such a good combo. Yeah. I we love should, listening. To we them. need to add Brad in here. We probably need to add Jim Hayes, and we definitely need to add Jim Edmonds because. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Ball game! I just got a text that says Jimmy Ball game should be in the tier list. <laughs> Yeah, he he just texted us wanting to be in the next time. So that's our tier list for this time. Um, seriously, tweet at us on Twitter uh, if you're watching right now. Um, send in the in the messages. Like, do you how do you agree with this list? Do you disagree? Is there anything you definitely were like that's a terrible one? Um, we'd love to hear. We'll probably post this graphic on Twitter later so people can mess with it. Um, I'll probably let. I'll probably let Andrew redo this in case he wants to change some of the backgrounds on some of these because I've made it look ugly. Sorry, Andrew. I felt like these were necessary. I think it's really funny to have the non-players look weird because they yeah. kind of stick out and you can tell, but we do need to change core. Yeah. I think the Aldi one definitely has to stay. That picture is just iconic now. So Can we really, really yeah. quickly like close with what the heck was going on with the security guard and Ollie? Yeah. That was okay, here's really weird. I Ollie handled it kind of weird and yeah, um, it was kind of uh, whatever, a little bit of a reaction, but then the national stuff where people are calling him out, I was like, okay, but the, the, the security guard was standing in the way. Ollie put his arm in the way to kind of to make sure he didn't walk in front of him and then grabbed him because he was falling down the stairs. He wasn't like throwing. Yeah, him out of the way. yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> I don't know. I think it got blown up. I think it started off as like, okay, like, this is weird. And then I was like, well, Ollie kind of handled it weird. And then I think it got blown out of proportion after Agreed. that. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, like it's okay to be upset when somebody like forces you to miss your opportunity to challenge. I would have yeah. been pissed. And Which, that's something that could have impacted the game. It was a yeah, one run so game. For people in the chat that don't know what happened, end of the inning, there was a challenge, a potential challenge on a call on the field. Ollie was waiting for uh, Danny Descalso to get the call if he should challenge it or not. Security guard walks in his path to see Descalso. And so Ollie tries to hold him back. Then the guy starts to fall down the stairs. So he grabs him by the collar. And then he thumbs up to the um, to the ump to say they want to challenge it, and they said it was too late. And so Ollie kind of blamed it on the the um, or the uh, security guard walking through. I do think it's funny that later there's a video that surfaced where the security guard bumped into Matt Carpenter while he was walking. Did you see that? Yeah, it was just. And weird. he's like called. A, he's a he has like a nickname. Get in the way, like, Ray. Yeah, get in the way, Ray. So yeah. Anyways, so whatever. It's interesting, but um, yeah, I. Uh, this is a interesting tier list. I think if Andrew is here, I, I wonder with how much different it would be. But um, be I feel pretty good about all of it. And also, again, a comment in the chat. This is, again, performance this year so far in a vacuum. One of the reasons we have Mo above, above Ollie is it's not we're not counting the years from moves from four years ago. We're not talking about Randy Rosarina and Lamar at the Libertor trade. We're talking about the moves he made this offseason, which we're not even trying to act like they're all great, but right now they're working. So you kind of have to give them flowers yeah. for right now in this moment in time. Yeah. Ollie, right now in this moment of time, I like Ollie's manager, but just, it's not been great so far. That's okay. So uh, we will definitely do this again throughout the season. So probably we'll wait to do this again until sometime in May to kind of do another check-in. Who knows? Maybe the end of April we'll do it again. I think it's a fun way to have conversations about performances on the field and kind of give like a stamp of approval to a lot of it. Um, again, thanks for listening, everyone. We really appreciate um, all the support. As always, we'll be back again on Sunday. Um, and so until next time, thanks for joining us.